This is Lynn from A Bit of Birdsong. I really hope the lighting is going to be good enough. Um, my photo light, my big lamp, photo lamp, professional lamp, is not working right now. And I'm hoping it only needs a new bulb. We, we shall find out. <laughs> bulb, bulb. I guess I'm so southern. Oh, let me not untie this right away. I wanted to show you a journal that I have been working on. I have loved working on this. I'm just in love with it. Of course, I think we fall in love with everything we make. That's the way it should be. But yes, I am still gonna part with it. A oh, piece of paper stuck to the back. Come on now. There we go. So this journal, I'm gonna see if I can make this quick. It's covered in fabric beautiful crimson sort of color with roses, the large roses that you know that I love. I've said that many times. Okay, I'm back. Yes, that was my sweetheart. He is on his way home. It's kind of late. Uh, he had some things he had to take care of and help some people with. He's so sweet. And he texted to see what I want to eat. Ugh, it's way too late to be eating, but we're eating dinner this late. Anyway, I won't tell you how late it is. So, Back to this journal. Hope the lighting is going to be okay. It is a fabric covered book. Starting on the front, we have this little plate. I think this is a um, Tim Holtz charm. I'm not sure, I've had these for a long time. Dream as if you'll live forever. And I have used the rest of my favorite ribbon that I've ever had. It's this beautiful gold ribbon, and the reason I love it so much is that it just looks really old. I love the way it crinkles. It does not have wire in it. It's very soft. It's just, eh, it's just one of those things I love, and I've had, I had a big, big bunch of it. I honestly don't remember where I got it. I don't know if it was something that I purchased in a lot of things when I had the retail store, Anyway, I, this is the end of it, and it is used as a closure for this beautiful journal. Now, this journal, uh, I learned a lot while doing this. I am still no expert by any means on gypsies, and even as I say that word, I know that there are some people who do not like that word. I completely respect that, and I understand it after researching some. But it is a word that is still used by a lot of people with nothing but fondness and admiration. Um, when I was a little girl, I thought it sounded so romantic to be a gypsy. And, uh, you know, in my mind, my image of a gypsy is a beautiful person. Someone with a darker complexion. Someone free-spirited who travels around, who plays music, who wears beautiful clothes, textures, color. Um, I think of all of the probably stereotypical things, and yet uh, I have... Well, I'll just give you an example. I was going to say, I mean, I've, I've read about and heard about people who speak of gypsies and the things that they do, and there's a reason that those thoughts are stereotypical, like being in touch with nature, traveling, being free-spirited. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll tell you more as we go through, but starting in the front, of course, I love birds. There had to be a bird in the front, and this beautiful um, image I printed, it was so much fun. I put it on a piece of cardstock and then added a stamp to the back. I sewed it together, put a postage stamp on it to make it look like a vintage gypsy postcard. I got this uh, printable from an Etsy shop. Let me look up the name. I don't want to say it wrong. I think I know it. Yes, I had it right, but I wanted to make sure. Velvet Rust. She's got some beautiful images, and this is one of the ones I purchased from her. I knew that I wanted some images in this journal of what I picture a gypsy princess, gypsy 
soul gypsy lady to look like. And there we have it. Beautiful image there. We have some lace. On this very front page, um, there's fabric, of course, bright. This sheer fabric, it looks like a scarf. And a, ta a little tag, or tab, I guess is what I'm trying to say, to turn the page. More um, sparkly fabric. Uh, all of the paper in this journal is either old or it's tea stained. And this book, it smells so wonderful. The, the smell is faint. It's not a really strong smell, but these pages were stained with a tea that was full of spices and even a little bit of leftover tea that I had purchased from an herbalist friend who lives uh, out on the west coast and it had a lot of conifer bits in it and berries little I guess I don't know if it was juniper berries I really don't know um, little tiny berries but the smell is just it's wonderful I'm sure it will fade over time but I could just sit and hold this journal and smell the pages it's just wonderful we have a little stamp there a lot of stitching in this journal this is from a vintage piece of fabric with some mushrooms. I cut that out and stitched it onto the page. This is a page from a vintage book um, about how to draw trees. This page is from a vintage um, herbal recipe book. And the book itself is probably from the 50s, but it was full of recipes from the 1700s. And here we have the first charm. We've got the um, crystal ball because gypsies are thought of as people who can read fortunes and they're great storytellers. So I thought that would be a fun charm. Here we have a card. I love these um, bottles here and the glasses. It makes me think about infusions or herbal teas, maybe even uh, spirits. Uh, things that are distilled and we have the Queen of Clubs on this side. Gypsies have also been known for uh, being able to read cards and there's another little piece of paper that we'll get to that talks a little bit more about that. Here's another tea stained page with a little stamp and some bright trim. Some of these pages I did iron a little bit after I took them out of the oven because they were quite crinkly, and I like that. It totally crinkly does not appeal to everyone, however. This page, I liked it because it reminded me of the woods, the forest. It just looks like bark. It looks like just a dense, maybe even uh, leaves or tree branches. And then here is a piece of fabric from an Indian garment. Um, gypsies, uh, as they're referred to sometimes, originally came from northern India. And I believe they like to be called Romani. Is that how you say that? Romani? That's their language, maybe, I guess. That's a pretty word. I like that. And I like the word bohemian. I like all of that. This page, I've made a tab from two vintage leaves that I have in my stash. Oh, I think I'm hearing one of the kitty cats. There's no telling where they are. I have a bunch of these. I love these leaves. Um, I bought a whole bunch at one time. Again, they are old and they're just, I love working with these. I thought that would make a pretty tab. And then we have some paper here that is very botanical in nature. I uh, bought this paper uh, out on one of my thrifting adventures, so I'm not really sure how it was made. It's just really pretty, and I like the feel. It's got a feel sort of like homemade paper. Then we have another piece of fabric from an Indian garment. It's got the little mirrored pieces in it. 
And when you turn the page, I love that it ties right in with the blue on these birds. Uh, these, these birds, uh, I want to say they're Florida Jays. I didn't put the name on there because I didn't really want to associate this book with uh, Florida. I didn't really want to associate this book with the United States. I just thought the color of the birds was absolutely gorgeous. I love that we can see the branches from the trees and the fruit and just the bright color. It, it, it again ties in with the theme of the entire journal. We have a stamp here that will carry through the book. You'll see it on more pages. More fabric from an Indian garment and more of this lovely paper with the botanical theme. Here is a quote. Love is like the wild rose briar, friendship like the holly tree. The holly is dark when the rose briar blooms, but which will bloom more constantly? And that is from Emily Bronte, one of the Bronte sisters. Here's a piece of music that says Gypsy Rondo by Haydn. So, and that piece, it's practically ready to, to rip into, and it may do so, but it is yours. You can keep it folded up here or take it out. You can tear it. You can do what you would like to with it. Another stamp, more of the paper that reminded me of the forest. And then we have another beautiful image printed from the same shop, and I will link her shop in the description. Uh, my mind is like a sieve. Did I say this was velvet rust? I think that's right. I love this. You can see the cardstock here and the floral stamp on the back. Just so sweet. So I stitched around, and these are just, this is a fun way to make cards that almost look like vintage photographs or postcards. You just trim the cardstock, and I got this from a heavy postage envelope, actually, that's cardstock um, weight, and printed this off. I printed this on some tea stained paper, actually. The first one over here was printed on just uh, white cardstock, so it's a little heavier feeling. I love the way they both turned out. And then we have another charm here, with the butterfly. Definitely makes me think of a free spirit and nature. And here's the other part of that page from the herbal recipe book. And my fingernails, I'm sorry they look so dirty. These can't grow long because I play the guitar. These are stained from tea staining papers, so there's just, and I can't, I can't polish my fingernails. I play the guitar, so it ends up coming off on the strings. I guess I could paint these. Anyway, I digress. So there's red raspberry and rhubarb. Some more of the page about drawing trees. I love that. And here we have an instrument. I always think about music when I think about gypsies. And coming to near the end of the first signature, and yes, there we are. So in between the first and the second signature, there is this little pretty trail of leaves that has been glued in. And they're kind of velvety from my collection. I think they're really pretty there. So we start this signature off with some contemporary paper that has been tea stained. I just liked the color. Uh, again, just another pretty bright color and I love that vine look. That's the reason I chose that. And here we go. Uh, this was from a book about playing cards and it has uh, some information here that perhaps playing cards uh, have their origin from an old bohemian legend. It's interesting. I guess I could read it. It says, it has been suggested that the first European playing cards owed their origin to the old bohemian legend, which still exist in varied forms. This legend tells of one Rubizal or Karl, as his name became in the German version, 
who watches for travelers with his turnips and his jug of water on the hall and rewards or punishes them in accordance with their treatment of him. The opinion of some authorities is that the gypsies, bohemians, who seem to have spread over the entire Austrian dominions before 1300, seized upon this legend and invented such designs as seemed to fit in with it and used them upon their fortune-telling cards. So, I like that. This, uh, this little piece right here, I just fell in love with this. I love the contrast of the color, or the contrast with the yellow and the pink, but that the pink and lavender here t picks this up a little bit. And I couldn't help but think about this beautiful bird bath and the birds. The birds are free spirits as well, and they are truly one of my favorite creatures on this planet. Of course, my shop name is a bit of bird song. I've it's because I love birds, but also, um, as fate would have it, one of my first ancestors in this country was a bird song. His name was John Birdsong. His daughter's name was Lucy Birdsong, which I just love. Isn't that so sweet? This is one of the few things in here that's not vintage or tea stained. I just cut this out and sewed it in. And I couldn't help but think about the just the wandering nature of nomadic people and how they would have to, um, I guess, be accustomed to not really putting down roots in the form of structures. Um, of course, they, they live in houses and things. I don't mean that, well, maybe more like covered wagons. And one of my grandmothers, by the way, was raised in a covered wagon. So I am certainly not uh, dissing that in any way, shape, or form. But I would think that if they moved around, as it is said they did, they would have enjoyed creatures more in their natural habitat, or if it were me, I would have used something to feed the birds that would be easy to put out and easy to pick up and travel with. So it definitely would not have been a large concrete bird bath I had to carry around. Good morning. Yes, it is a different session, a different recording session. It is the next morning from my showing you this journal. We left off on this page and my sweetheart arrived home and we had dinner together and I decided to just wait until this morning and the light's probably better now as well. I have the, the curtains open and a couple of lamps here on the desk. I've got my coffee. But um, so we left off on this page. And one of the reasons that I chose to put this in, even though it's not tea stained, it's not vintage, I love the dichotomy of this very in town sort of setup of a beautiful bird bath and a bird and people who would be more nomadic or living in the forest or just um, small campsites from place to place and you definitely would not set up one of these but you could still enjoy nature and the birds and maybe even more so than people who are not as in touch with it up close every day Okay, now onto these pages. This is some lined paper. It looks very yellowed. I don't know if you can see the color contrast between these two pages. The reason this is yellow is that one of the batches of paper had some turmeric in it. Turmeric, and it is very yellow, of course. It's also very good for you, and I love the way it aged the paper. It has a totally different feel from this. Not tactile, but I mean just the vibe that it gives off. But I like it together. This is really special. I'm not sure. This is contemporary paper that was uh, tea stained. There's a very faint botanical print throughout this page. I'm not sure if you're going to get a good view of it uh, from the distance the camera is and with the lighting. This, I love this. Uh, of course, this plastic is, is very recent, but I wanted to cover this to protect it. 
I found this pressed butterfly with part of the wings still intact in a very old book that I recently purchased. The book was, I want to say, from about 1950, and this was between the pages. I had to lift it very gently from the paper that it was on. It had kind of bonded to the paper in the center, but I used a small paper clip and, no, not a paper clip, another sheet of paper. I was thinking of something else that I did about the same time, and I slid it right underneath and it lifted off of the page. So it is adhered to this card. I didn't want it to fall off and just break all apart, so it's, it's intact very pretty and to think that this is what 70 years old probably I have a feeling it was in the book from the 50s and not anything more recent than that so that is in here keep that very carefully in this little pocket here there we go okay I'm back I had a phone call and so here we are with wherever I left off. I'm not sure. I think I was talking about this paper here that uh, says folio. It's a heavy cardstock. It's nice. Then we have this uh, peeling paint. This is another piece of contemporary scrapbook paper that's been tea stained. I put a stamp here. That looks like, I think that's a lilac blossom. Maybe not, but that's sort of what it reminds me of. So back to this, you see this stamp again, more of that botanical theme paper. You can kind of tell from the edges what I'm talking about when I mention the texture and it seems more like a hand made paper. It's ripped on the edges and it feels like it's got fibers in it when you, when you tear it. Um, an image from the vintage um, herbal recipe book Henbane, and just a couple of blank pages with some stamps. There's Mandrake, more of the botanical theme paper, and another stamp. Again, you can see the pretty yellowing on this paper from the turmeric, and I love this scrapbook paper. The, the bees, that looks like a wasp. Um, just love that. And one of the thoughts that I did have while working on this journal uh, about the word gypsy and how it is considered um, a derogatory identifying name, um, and I, I, don't, I do want to use the right thing. I don't want to use a word that is offensive to a lot of people. So a lot of thought went into that and what I should say and call this journal. But I thought of how there is a prejudice against the gypsies in many places, and they're immediately not wanted. In fact, I read about some countries in the past or cities or towns, what have you, that had set up a system, they would pay the gypsies to leave as soon as they showed up because they did not want to have them around. This made me think about creatures and, um, I guess, uh, races that, that, that scare people. And I, I wish that it wasn't that way. And I love I, one of the things my daughter and I used to do in my garden, we had these huge, I guess they're bumblebees. I, bumblebee is used in different ways with different um, members of that, that insect uh, species or genus, I guess it is. But we would, well, they would get so, these bees, they were so heavy. We also had carpenter bees <clears throat> and they're very big. But they would land on the rosemary or um, the rue, and they would be so, so just nose down, or oh, I guess they don't have noses, but in the little blossoms, you could stroke the backs of these bees, and they would not move. And my daughter, she, she would do that with me, and I think she was a little afraid, and 
wasn't that I was trying to put her in a dangerous situation, but I didn't want her to be afraid of every little thing. And uh, we had a visitor one time who was so impressed with Michaela's uh, love of the plants and just being able to walk up and not be afraid of the bees like that. He bought her a little teddy bear and brought it to her, which I thought was really sweet. All right, so more of this graph looking paper. And again, there's that faint botanical uh, design in this darker paper. This page is very yellowed. I love the dragonfly. There's a tiny little tuck spot or pocket here at the bottom. And here we go again. Another creature that has a negative connotation in some cultures. Blackbirds, crows, ravens. I love them. I absolutely love them. Uh, but I, I wanted that there for the contrast and just to carry along with the theme of this journal. Here's a page from a, an insect book from the 1950s. The structures of insects. And again, we're going to things that maybe some people would instantly be afraid of. And I would think, on the other hand, that a nomadic people who are very in touch with herbs and nature, they wouldn't bat an eye at, at being in touch with nature. And we would not have the ecosystem we have without these creatures. Um, one of the things I want to share real quickly in uh, making this book, this journal, and having such a theme of nature along with the theme of gypsies or bohemians, Romani. I thought a lot about an herbalist that I just love. She, she's passed away at this point. Her name is Juliette de Bericlay Levy. I think I'm saying that correctly. And I'm going to put some links in the description. But she she left college as a young girl and wanted to travel with the gypsies. She wanted to travel with the nomadic people. Um, she loved animals and she wanted to be in touch with people who lived very closely to nature and to their animals. And she spoke of these people with such respect and such fondness. She learned so much from them I believe she lived into her 90s and she was still swimming on a regular basis. She always lived near the sea. I think she did move around a lot. She always had herbs and trees all around wherever she would live. Just a delightful, delightful person. And there, there's a DVD that I bought. It's a, it, you can buy it. I, I'll try to find where you can purchase it and put a link to that. It's called Juliet of the Herbs, I believe is the name of it. And I have it somewhere. I, I, this made me think as I was doing this journal, I've got to pull that DVD out and watch it again. And I want my sweetheart to see it. So I hope he will watch it with me. I know he will. But anyway, so that's, I had her in mind a lot when I was making this journal. So here we have a beautiful bird uh, print that's older, not super old, I'm thinking maybe 10 or so years. Every day a new picture is painted and that's the row. Another stained paper. Here we have some paper, scrapbook paper that's contemporary and you see the locks. There, and there's more of the design in the back. Well, actually I turned right to it. You can see the locks here. That is because, again, some people were so afraid of the gypsies, they immediately started locking things up when these people would come through. And I just wanted to have this page in here as a reminder of how we should treat others. Um, we shouldn't be prejudiced. So here we get to this page, more tea stain the little stamps. I purchased several stamps just for this book. Oh, one of my favorite charms. Oh, and I didn't even tell you about this charm. It says story, and I think that's one of the things we all fall in love with when thinking about the Bohemian people. They seem to have a story to their life, 
because of the traveling and the music. Maybe it's stereotypes, but it still, it tells a story. And I want my life to tell a story. I want to leave behind pieces of art and things that my children can say, oh, that was mama. So this charm says, um, good tidings we bring. And I like that as well. I saw this charm and I knew it had to go in this journal. Ah, oh, this is one of my favorite pages. I love this. This looks like hydrangea blooms to me. And of course, that's a big fancy iris. The fabric is from an Indian garment. You can see that pretty silver trim. This page has got a lot of um, ink, ink on it. Old poem there, uh, Old Friends. And that's from one of those sunset books. Uh, I think most of you will know what I'm talking about. The hardcover books, they were real popular, I think, through the 60s and 70s, maybe the 80s. Here's a page from a vintage map that opens out. There's a pretty rose from some wallpaper that I had stitched onto a page. I thought it would be fun to write even along the lines. You can journal in different little spots in here and in here and in here. I just love it. This looks like German to me. Uh, just a little music instructional thing for I guess a kinder kindergarten or children. I'm not sure about that. There's another piece of the ribbon sewn onto this page. Again, the stamps that I bought especially for this book. These are older stamps. I want to say that maybe it said 2000. I guess I could I could check. May I'll put that in the description where some of these stamps came from. Here's another one of the bird prints. Each moment of the year has its own beauty which shall never be seen again. And that's Emerson. These are actually prints that were on the fronts of some greeting cards that were just lovely. So I pulled the front off. More uh, fabric from an Indian garment and the stamps there. And here's a little, a little place. <laughs> Last night I had my purple sleeves on from working and this morning I've got this thermal underwear shirt on. The gray. So there's another little instrument tucked under there. My sweetheart says that's a bass violin. I love it. And you have one of the old clips. There's several of these in the book. That's a Tim Holtz. It's not old, it's meant to look old, is what I'm trying to say. I like those a lot. So on this page, we have um, this piece of craft paper that has had a little bird stamped out or cut out, excuse me, and a stamp of that pretty, pretty lady. I love that stamp. And underneath is a vintage piece of, I don't know if this is, what would this be called, parchment paper? I, these came off of the backs of images that had been put on this heavy, heavy, um, like cardboard, and it wasn't, not corrugated, but like a heavy cardstock, but I mean very heavy. It's like what you would see a print put on if it was going to be for sale, like it is to frame. And the, the images were falling off of this heavy, heavy cardstock. On the back of each image was a piece of this. I don't know why. And it, it, it was held down with some adhesive at some point, but it was so dry and old, it just fell right off. I had, I had purchased several of those images or, or prints, and these came off the backs of those. This is probably the widest page in this book. It came out of a book. It was like the uh, end piece or front piece or, or whatever you want to call it. So it's not brand new. This is not new cardstock, but I did not tea stain this. There's more of the purple paper. You've seen this paper before. Back over here, I used this to make a little pocket. And here is a tag that I tea stained. It's got some gold ribbon in it. And I used my, um, forget that, what they're called, to put the rivets in. And here is another, this is a tassel off of an Indian garment. That's another charm. 
there's a big pretty fabric leaf sewn onto the page and there's some velvet trim that's just sewn on another stamp there are the locks that we saw before more of that yellow stain and this lace trim let's take this out for a second this i love this um, so on the last page you have part of a map it says indian ocean and this is a page from a book that's probably from around 1900 i don't know exactly maybe the early part of 1900 I want to grab the book real quickly so you can see it. This is Sesame and Lilies by John Ruskin. And we have an inscription in the front. Get my magnifying glass. For dear Annie, with the love of... I can't even read that. Something D. Powell. So it was gifted to someone, John Ruskin, the author, his picture is there in the front. As you can see, the pages are falling out in some areas. I don't think this had a date in it. I remember looking this up even when I was in the store. This says Norwood Press, Berwick and Smith, Boston, USA. This might have been the early 1900s. I'm trying to remember what made me think that it was earlier than that. He was writing in the 1800s. Uh, maybe that was one of the things that I thought about it since John Ruskin was the author. And it does appear to be very old. I love this. But the cover is almost completely gone. I imagine it just broke from, probably had some crease lines from opening and closing, and there it went. But not going to take the time to read this entire page to you, but it is talking about the land in England, and you got to remember this is really old, so there were thoughts even then as we have now about destruction of land. Uh, just a little bit in here, it says, now you cannot indeed have here in England woods 18 miles deep to the center but you can perhaps keep a ferry or two for your children yet, if you wish to keep them. But do you wish it? Suppose you had each, at the back of your houses, a garden large enough for your children to play in, with just as much lawn as would give them room to run, no more, and that you could not change your abode, but that if you chose, you could double your income or quadruple it, by digging a coal shaft in the middle of the lawn and turning the flower beds into heaps of coke, what would you do it? I think not. I can tell you you would be wrong if you did, though it gave you income sixty-fold instead of fourfold. Yet this is what you were doing with all England. The whole country is but a little garden, not more than enough for your children to run on the lawn of if you would let them all run there. It goes on to speak about what's being done to the land. And on the other page, it starts with, um, oh, I love this sentence. And yet I cannot, though there is no part of my subject that I feel more, press this upon you. For we made so little use of the power of nature while we had it that we shall hardly feel what we have lost. Ah, be still my heart. I love that. He was a controversial man because of his lifestyle, uh, his failed marriage, his maybe some of the comments he made later in life. His writing, however, has stood the test of time. Some people don't like it, some consider it brilliant, but this writing about the land, I think is just, it fits in perfectly with this. You may wonder what this page is. I was aware as I was putting textiles and embellishments in this that I wanted it to be a useful journal that you could write in. 
Uh, most pages, that is the case. It's not going to be a problem. There's not going to be anything to hinder you on the other side. But this front page, going back to the front, there's fabric here and we have this pocket here that I love. If you wanted to write on this, I think it might be uh, cumbersome. So I made this little page to put under other pages. I would still be gentle with the pen. Writing is such a beautiful process and it should be enjoyed. This is from a book from around 1900. It's inscribed to someone. Um, it says Sarah from Aunt Helen, Christmas of 1927. And I've just stitched around the edge. I'm going to include this as a little card that you can place under the pages if you like to give you a little place to write upon. That's it. That's this journal that I love so much. Oh, and it smells so good. I hope that scent will stay with it forever, but I'm afraid it's going to fade. It just, it smells like such a mix of trees and spices and tea it is so wonderful that's in the pages this will be going into my etsy shop this weekend i hope you enjoyed seeing it and thank you so much for stopping in i appreciate your spending some of your time with me at a bit of birdsong please like and subscribe if you're inclined that way you'll know when something else is available on my channel and I appreciate the friendships and the comments here. I love it when you um, leave a comment so I know what you're thinking and what I can do better here. All right, see you next time.